Hi, this is Tina with TNT Crochet Hookers, where knit happens. Long time no see. Just have to say, pandemic. Um, lots to adjust to. I'm not someone who is able to be working from home, so I do go to work. You know, for a while there, seven days a week. So it's been quite a big adjustment. Um, stressed out just like everyone else but let's get to the good stuff so happy Valentine's Day weird day to start coming back but my husband did me a really huge favor the other T to that TNT he actually followed me around today and we went to the farmers market then he went to Michael's with me because I had this crazy idea after watching two different YouTube channels. Um, I'm going to list them below or you'll see them on the screen. And what it was was I've really gotten into, which is one of the things before you stop seeing me, I really wanted to learn how to knit socks. And I've just really, it's really quite helped me through a lot of the stresses that have been going on, especially since most of us are worried about health, our family's health, just our families in general, uh, just everything that's been kind of going on in the world. So knitting, crochet has helped me through that. Um, with that being said, didn't think it was a good idea to film, especially many, many different days. But today, when my husband took me and Michael's, after watching the two YouTube videos, I was kind of, you know, you get on that YouTube tangent where it leads you here, there, everywhere. Well, I've seen, like, especially on Instagram, a couple of ladies with huge rings of socks. Like, 12 at a time, 8 at a time, socks. I thought that was super cool. But then I was thinking, well, how do they hold all those balls, all those skeins, all those cakes? So... They actually had videos, and like I said, I'll list it down below, of how they did it. And one woman, she actually used shoe boxes, different size shoe boxes, and just used cardboard to divide it up, which I thought was really great. Um, or she actually, they had gotten a, the base of, I guess, a package TV. So the styrofoam at the base that holds the TV, she used that to line them up as well. Now, it was on a 60-inch magic loop, and I will let you know, I had to kind of modify it so where it would work for me. So, first thing, I decided, wow, when I was thinking about this, that was such a cool idea, but I don't want it in a box that, you know, I want it in something pretty. <laughs> so, I decided to go to Michael's, and I, probably, oh, I already put it in the other room. But, and I'll kind of take this apart because it's really not that hard to put back together. So I picked a box that could be tall enough so that no matter what size skein I had, and I've been using a lot of West York, Yorkshire Spinners uh, four ply, and so they're about yay tall. But then there's other ones that you can get, and then a cake is only so big. So I figured it had to be big enough for that. My idea for it is because I do my toes and heels typically on a magic loop, but for the most part, everything else is actually done on nine inch circulars. I've used Hi Hiya's or Chiaogu. Um, 2.25 is my favorite, but I also figured, well, I could kind of just have a pair per cubby and work out of both the middle and the outside and I just kind of do them at the same time I get so far on each one and then I just work the other one to about the same distance or I just work a whole one and maybe I get bored with that color I can move to another one so found this box it was one of the only ones left um, had coupons, all that good stuff, so of course it doesn't cost as much as what most of the time they have it listed. I like the fact that it had a clamp, 
And most of my knitting is done in the car, so I go in the morning, I drop off my husband, I get to work because there's parking issues, so I get I try to get there typically about an hour early. And really that kind of gets me started to get ready for our work, and I have a very high um, stress, high it's a very active job, so a lot of walking, a lot of talking, a lot of just crap. So I get, you know, kind of settles me down, gets my mind kind of set. So then I work. I go to pick up my husband from his job. Well, obviously he doesn't get off as earlier as early as I do, so that's my quiet time as well. Since the pandemic. Most of my family has moved back here. I have not a huge house. Don't get me wrong. I have a nice little tiny house. And um, that's great. So our house is full. There's never a time that I don't have any quiet time except in my car. So it's kind of funny. My husband's co-workers are always like, oh, hurry up and get off work. Your wife's in the car waiting. He's like, no, this is her time, which it is. So back to this. I thought this would be fairly durable so that I can carry it to the car and just really jump in the back seat maybe, stick this in the driver's seat, sit in the passenger seat, because we all know I ain't driving home. Mm -mm, no. <laughs> I'm going to either knit in the passenger seat, because <laughs> can't knit and drive, it's illegal, especially in Virginia. But when I decided to do this, I also thought if anything it would keep me from getting bored. I'm, I get very distracted, and I think it doesn't help. Like mentally, some of us are just kind of having struggles, and this kind of helps me. So I don't want to be committed to just one pair of socks. A lot of people are very monogamous knitters. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit of a floozy knitter. Sorry, I bounce around. Um, so this is how it's set up. I love this. This took maybe, I think a total of two, three hours. It wasn't a rush. It was, and me and my husband did it together. So it was really kind of fun that we were able to work this out and kind of get an idea. So it's the box. It Now I'm going to kind of pull this out so it's going to look like a mess. But what I wanted to talk to you about before I do that is as you can see, this is actually, you'll see a lot of these are the same color. My daughter's getting ready for a wedding, and I kind of really want to do specialty socks for them for that day. This is a sock that I've kind of already done for my son-in-law, and now I'm going to make it for my other daughter's significant other. So I've been, been in the process of working on his, so this is his that I've been working on. And the way I can actually work on some of those, too, is I'm going to pull these out as I go, just to make it easier. But what I'm going to do is I have over here my templates. And I'll show those in just a second. But then I have, like, little heel toes and cuffs, because I do a lot of... Um, my goal is to have a box of Advent socks. That ain't going to happen probably for, it's going to take me a long time. I am not a fast knitter. Um, I was pretty impressed with myself. I actually got a pair of socks done in 13 days, which is the fastest I've ever done it. I don't think that will ever happen again very soon because that was also me driving to Georgia and back. And I had a lot of knitting time, so um, that was probably the only reason that happened. But I like to have like extra heel toes and cuffs, so these are some of the colors I want to use for that. Just got this one in, which is a stroll fingering weight from Knit Picks. And obviously this is just a really good durable, takes a lot of, uh, I don't know, abuse. And then these are my extra little balls that I figure I'll use at some point. Again, West Yorkshire Spinners. And West Yorkshire Spinners. So let's pull all of this out. And this one I just got in two, and I just got this from Michaels. Now this one is a Knit Crate one from a while back 
for yarn there. And this was the sock one. It's kind of twinkly. And this is a whole big story I'm going to tell you about in a little bit. And another Christmas knit crate. So my goal is to kind of use these for Christmas. But, oh, and there's even another one. And I can tell you this is West Yorkshire Spinner Cherry. No, the other one's Cherry Drop. I can't quite remember what this one's called. But, so, as you can tell, now we just have the core of it. So this came all just on its own. This is the organizer that we made today. So really, this is what I worked on. And this plastic here, you can get from the poster board section. And we just got two of them. I measured the height with kind of what we needed. We knew that we had to have it so where it would insert into each other. So I'm going to take this apart because it's easy to put back together. And there we go. Simply three pieces this size, two pieces this size. And again, they just go right into each other. Now when we did it, he kind of, we just cut this using a straight razor and um, just a piece of wood at the bottom. A nice metal um, ruler that was pretty heavy duty. Then he went downstairs and he has like this... Um, handsaw, but it's electric, and so we just kind of made two lines. I had the measurements already here. I already knew how far we needed to go, but then I took um, just a small X-Acto knife to clean it up. Now, this was a raw edge, and I wanted this to at least look a little bit nicer. Just washi tape from Michaels, so it was the box. Two of these poster plastic and it's plastic poster board, washi tape. That was really it. And I wrapped it around. I first folded it over on top, wrapped it, and then did a whole tape around just to hold and secure it down. So my idea for this, again, I'm not going to be one that does a giant magic loop. I think it's a great idea. I and I loved watching the women do it. I thought it was just fabulous. But I also know I'm, I have limited room in my car, and so I really needed this to be more portable. And both of them will tell you it's not as portable as one would think because, you know, you have to have all those strings. You want to keep track of everything. So my idea was because... For stress, I just wanted something that I could bounce from one type of sock to another. So if I got bored with this color sock, I could go back to this one. Now I have until December to get this done, and it's several different socks that I want to do for that. So I know that it's going to be a long haul. It's not going to be a quick fix. I'm going to have to you know, have time and patience for it. But I thought, you know, I can work on other projects as it goes. And like I said, I'm not a monogamous knitter. I wish I could be that way. Even though I will say with my socks lately, I'll start a pair and then finish it. Um, now, granted, don't get excited because I've really only done four socks for myself. I still have to fix, fix the heel of one of them. And at some point, you know, maybe if I get up to like halfway 10, I'll show them to you. Most of the time you can follow me on Instagram, TNT Crochet Hookers. And it shows all my socks, everything I've been working on, what I've been doing. And I will have more videos out about crochet because I've been doing a lot of that too. But back to this. So when I'm packing this up, my goal is once I get through these socks, this is like something I can keep virtually forever, as long as I don't trash it and destroy it, I'm good. But 
my next set of socks will be, I've got um, some paint and croy, croy. A bunch of these kind, just different types. And I really want to be able to get it so where my husband, he can just have these socks. They're really great, um, especially wool socks because I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos and it it's self wicking um, because the wool doesn't it's you know has antibacterial fibers I guess or whatever either way they say it's really good and guess what it helps my stress helps my husband's stress and he gets socks out of it woohoo so with that I'm hoping to like start to as I get through certain ones I just put a new set of yarn in there of what I want to work on next and I just kind of keep bouncing through so my idea is maybe it's not a giant magic loop but I can pull from the center and the outside to get one pair of socks and with that being said now this one is actually on a needle there's room so where I can tuck it in there so as I go, different socks, I'll pull up whatever sock I want to work on that day. And when I'm done, I can fold it up and tuck it in. Works out pretty well. If it's still on the magic loop, guess what? Tucks in and it's out of the way. Perfect height, everything. And if you're like me where you're just doing what you can to get through all the stress, Again, it took no time at all to do this. Um, just a little bit of time. And believe it or not, that kind of helped with stress too because I was like, it kept me occupied. So, let me put some of this in here so you can kind of see. And I'll put that away later. This one definitely is going to go in there with the green because that's what I'm going to work with that. My blue with the blue and I do really like doing heel toe and cuffs in a contrasting color I think and, and again it's whatever you like it's whatever you prefer um, that's just what I like to do and then all right so now we're down to kind of this other stuff that can go in there all right so with the templates I do have rulers sock rulers children, smaller feet, and then whopper. So I haven't really used, I've used them a little bit, but not a whole lot, but I can actually slide this because I made sure there was at least a little bit room where I can slide this just right down, and it's not a problem. Now, I was watching videos, and this is just the instructions. I thought that would be a good idea to always have the instructions with the ruler in case I forget how to use it. Now these, you'll think, wow, wow. But my son-in-law, he is six foot five. I think he's six seven. But it, you, there's no one who has a recipe for that. So. Um, I remember reading in a book, and taught, and No Fear, um, Denise from uh, No Fear Socks, Fear, yeah, I'll put it down below. She was saying, you can trace someone's foot, obviously, I did this with cereal boxes during Halloween, I thought they were pretty funny. But you just trace it, and then actually what I did was I wrote his sock recipe as I went. So now all I have to do is repeat this. I have the needle sizes, just all the details of the whole thing right here. And then my other daughter's significant other, these are his tootsies, and I'm hoping to get my husband's, but actually when I was doing his sock, I actually had already started um, writing his recipe down. So when I did his first pair of socks, I didn't have a template. I really didn't know what I was doing yet. And so 
there's my husband's pair of socks. So I already know his recipe, what, what works. He liked it. He had no issues with it. So that's, I already have his. And then with my grandson, because little boys grow very fast, he's five years old, it's, I don't want to put a hill in for him. So I make tube socks for him. So that's super easy. I don't even need a recipe for that. But all this can fit right in here. And then I liked this one because it actually has like some room up here. So when I close everything up, I know I can actually kind of stack some stuff on top, which is what I'm going to do. So let me kind of put this away. And I know this kind of seems crazy to watch, but why not? I mean, this way you can kind of, that's a really messed up ball. I'm fixing that later. But you can kind of see like what exactly I'm going to do with this. And I don't know, maybe it can help inspire you. If not, that's okay too. Now, let's move on to a sock that has brought me much woe. And it's an interest, well, it was an interesting story for me. All right, so I decided that I want to learn how to do something different with socks. I did, you know, just to kind of change it up a little bit. So I know that a lot of people talk about helical knitting, which is basically you're, you're, so you're knitting in a spiral. So you don't have anything running up the side or anything like you're not carrying your yarn up you're just spin you're just knitting in literally a spiral so i was able to do it where i did the heel toe cuff now this is knit crate yarn except for this which actually i think it is knit crate yarn it was when they did the um dye your own yarn kit sock kit and i actually like just the plain yarn, undyed yarn, so I thought, well, you know, I could use this for something else. Maybe someday I'll want to dye, but not right now. Um, there's too many other things I've got to do. So, Knit Crate, this is a Delight Sport in their strawberries, but I thought, oh, that looks kind of Christmassy. And then this one is their uh, sock and it's the uh, garland and which this really was their Christmas yarn one year so I was doing so well I had finished the sock and you're thinking oh there should be plenty of yarn left and there was I have another project that I'm working on which leads to kind of how insane I probably really am so I decided, you know, I am not going to have any scrap yarn at all because I'm going to have enough other little projects to do. And it's been great so far. I've really enjoyed it. Everything's been well with it. So after I finish each sock and knitting I love you, Barbara is amazing. I got hooked on her full of minis hat. So I have a tendency that once I'm kind of inspired by a pattern, I just kind of keep going with it. It's weird. Not a lot of people do that, and that's okay. It's whatever is going to inspire you. This is what happens with me. <laughs> I loved her pattern so much, and I do wear that hat quite a bit, especially during the fall because it's a lot of fall colors. But I was thinking, oh, if I do a Christmas, Christmas advent box full of socks, wouldn't it be kind of neat to have a hat to match it? So I figured, you know, there's always going to be a little bit of leftovers. So I did a hat. But then there were still all these leftovers. So then I thought, well, why not have a matching cowl? And so at some point, I have a cowl that will actually match. And I can wear whatever socks I want because all the colors will be in my cowl. They'll be in my hat. It may need two hats for it. But either way they're going to be there. Well, then I thought, well, if I'm going to have a hat and a cowl, I need my hands warm. See, I'm that sick. I have issues. But it doesn't stop there. No, it really doesn't. I can't wait to wear all this. 
But then I thought, well, why not make scrappy socks? <laughs> so I have scrappy socks to go along with the matching socks because if you look, these colors are right here. And then this is from my um, Peppermint Bark socks, and these are the ones I just finished. So, oh, and I have a pair of socks that are just the green with red heel toes and cuffs. So I've already done a whole pair of socks using these two colors. Yeah, we'll get to the fact that these are two brand new balls, or cakes. So, once I get done with that, I thought, Phew, I still have plenty, so why not? Why not? I will make a pretty little blanket. <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's been a stressful time period, but let's get for real. I'd probably be like this even without the pandemic. And I'm still trying to figure out, I know it's not done yet. I wanted to do one of those cozy blankets, and this is a crochet one. And then here's a knitted one, but I wasn't, actually I have two knitted ones here. But I'm still not really sure or confident of how I can kind of pull this off and make it all work. So these are just down at the bottom. Then I have little crochet hooks just to help me. Oh, I have to talk about the bag real fast. This is from the Dabbling Hook. And she does such pretty bags. I've been using this one quite a bit. I love it. It's got a pocket little place to place your hook and I've used her stitch marker. It's a cute little stitch marker that came with it and she also has she had this come with it as well. It was a little flower and I put my stitch markers and keepers right on there. It's really cute. So that's what I've been doing with this. So that's why there was no extra yarn and when I got to drop my husband off at work. I was down to four rows left. So I'd already done all of this, four rows left. That's all that was left on the cuff, and then I just had to do the afterthought hill. Drop them off, say goodbye, blah, blah, all that good stuff. I get to my work and I'm getting ready to turn onto the road in which I'm on, the, where my job is. And it's a major light. And I go, I go to look and go, oh, you know, I was one, I don't know, I went to grab it for some odd reason. I went to go and it was supposed to, so when I got out of the passenger seat, I put it down. I always just kind of put the knitting right down where I was sitting. And I went to look and I was like thinking, oh, you know, let me admire it a little bit more, probably something stupid like that. And it wasn't there. So I was thinking, oh, you know, and this is a very long light, so I'm not doing anything wrong or anything like that. And I see the string, literally, the string. But this part, and I was like, oh, maybe it fell on the, between the door and the passenger seat right between there so I figured oh I'll just pull the string because there was very little like a really small ball of it left I mean literally this much left for the grain and I was thinking oh you know I'm doing really good I pulled the string and I realized oh and it gets so dramatic because like I couldn't even breathe at this point I pull the string and I realize it is hanging out the door. Hanging out the door. Yeah. I am just like, I don't know how many of you <laughs> really love their projects, but I am like, this is my art. This, and my husband really kind of explained it because I called him completely devastated. Because I open up the door hoping, is there a chance? Could it be? And... All that was there was the end of a string. Everything else was gone. I was, and I still had a full day of work to go. Let me tell you, it was not a good day. Mm-mm, no. I was ready to go home at that point, <laughs> and that was it. My day was going to be done. 
but I was talking to him and I was just so upset, so devastated. And I said, well, and my daughters, everyone said, well, just make this like your, you know, put it by the chimney and, you know, it'll just be kind of like, oh, there's your art from that, you know. <laughs> I don't, that would be a horrific memory, though, to be honest. So we actually drove up and down Route 66 looking for this sock because <laughs> I was pretty upset. I knew there was no more yarn left. I had just enough to finish this project. That was it. And if everyone knows about knit crate yarn, especially the sock crates, if you don't get it then, you don't get it. And so I was just devastated because I knew I wouldn't have any yarn that would actually match it. I, that's where this came from because I felt like it was close. And it is fairly close, but this has a little, I feel like a little bit of more teal in it, and this is more like that hunter green. So I knew it didn't match. It doesn't match completely. I mean, it could have gotten by. I could have made it work. Yeah. That's what this was for, to see if maybe that's why I have all these different red yarns, because I was trying to figure a way to that I can make it work, because I still had plenty of this. So my daughter and I went on Ravelry to de-stash, and we found two wonderful ladies. I don't know if they would ever want me to mention them on my channel, but thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I found in only two, literally two different ladies. One wonderful woman had this one, and the other one had this one and I was ecstatic so D stash woohoo let me tell you I'm a advocate of it now because I thought well when would I ever need this yeah I needed it I needed it desperately so and again a lot of people are like oh you know you don't need matchy matchy socks I wish I could be someone who doesn't <laughs> I really would love to be, but most of my socks I do, even if they're striping socks, I, I'm that puller. At, well, here, seriously, here's a good example. That's why this ball is here, is because I wanted it to match. I have the socks match, and I don't know why, it's crazy. But it, I just, so if you ever have a crazy story like that, put it down in the comments because mine like about drove me that you know what crazy that day. And it took seriously um, a month through trying to get things worked out, trying to find someone. We looked everywhere to see if we could find any type of um, this yarn anywhere. Honestly, I looked at eBay. Etsy, you know, you name it, I, and you may be able to name additional locations, and please, I will write those down, because if this was to ever happen again, I want all the notes, I want everything, because I will write it in my little flipping book, so I know I can get this yarn again, but, so that was my crazy story of what happened, I will be starting that pair, the last sock, um, needless to say, it would be one of those things where, um, because I'm so paranoid, and it's nice because it fits right there in my little cubby, but it is going to be something to where I work on it in the back seat. I put it completely away in my cubby, <laughs> and it doesn't attach to, obviously, my buttocks because it must have been attached to my leg, my jeans, or something. I walked out, walked around, said, bye-bye, honey, got into the driver's seat, went headed off to work. Never even had an idea. Oh, and I lost a set of Chowgu 9-inch circular needles. So, you know, if anyone ever finds that sock, ha, -ha. But, so back to this. Let me put all this crazy, and I don't carry this stuff with me all the time. This is usually right after I've finished the project, then I begin to work on these. So I just kind of stick them in my dabbling, the dabbling hook bag. 
And it's cute because she has her little label. Let's put all this away. So what I want to put in here is everything kind of like that I would need. All my little goodies, all in one shop stop. So the back of my my box has like tills in it, and come to find out, I have a nice little till bag. Um, I think it's a, oh it is, it's a 31, yeah, so 31 bags, my sister-in-law sells it. I'm not endorsed by her, love you Steph, she's amazing. Um, I can put her link down below if you'd like, but um, and I don't even know if this is still there, but there's tons of other beautiful bags, always are. But it matched so perfectly that I was like, oh, I'll use this. But I also have one just for like lotions, lip balm. You always need a pencil and a pen. And that's where I'm going to put my little notepad. Oh, and I wear glasses, so I need a glass cleaner. That can fit there. All of my needles and hooks. Now, I do have a hook that's a 2.25. So if I ever drop a stitch... And I found a new way to um, bind off the cuff where it's crocheting the top. So I actually use this as well. And then stick my little stitch markers in here. You always need a ruler sometimes. And I have scissors somewhere around here. I'm sure they'll stab me at some point. Yeah, I'll find those in a minute. So that can fit in there. And you always need a mask. They're so prevalent now. Stick that right here. Stick my other things. There's a pen. Now, and I'm just shoving most of this in just so you can see what I can fit in here. But my last pair of socks, my husband got this not Christmas gift, but he gave it to me on Christmas. But it's not a Christmas gift. Not at all. So I said, woohoo, but I was able to do um, a little cable behind my last pair of socks. Can I actually see me? <laughs> so it's, I can just sit it right here. And I want to say that's pretty much it. You click, well, let me make sure my ribbons are in because I want to keep those as pretty as long as I can. made my day today. <laughs> Obviously with the house full of people we didn't have a romantic evening but you know what for years having three kids nah there wasn't a whole lot of balance and me and my husband we're kind of like um, I feel like we kind of embrace life and each other as much as possible so for the most part we don't usually need Valentine's Day but it would have been nice, not going to lie, a uh, night out for dinner, but I will tell you, going out to eat kind of stresses me out, a lot of things like for many of us, and then there's many of us who maybe feel like, oh, it's just too much, you know, drama or whatever. For me, it stresses me out. Let me tell you, it's been very stressful. So this, and knowing I have this, and it was something I made, and it was inspired by two wonderful women on YouTube. And like I said, I'll link them below. It was amazing. So I hope you have an amazing day as well. I hope you guys had a good Valentine's Day. If you have some crazy stories about how you've lost your knitting or destroyed it in the past, hey, put it down in the comments. Cheer me up a little bit because, oh, it's been rough. <laughs> and... I'm hoping not to be absent for so long. I really have some projects that I've been working on that I've just absolutely loved. It's really given me peace of mind, um, taking a lot of stress away, a lot of stuff I'm actually working on and getting ideas for. So I'm hoping to be back soon. Um, it does, when you only have your two days off 
and you have a house full of lovely, wonderful people that you love, all of them, um, but you're, you're always being pulled in different directions, it's very hard to kind of get everyone out of one room and <laughs> so you can film for just a little bit. We were able to do that tonight. I think we're going to try to do that more often. We'll see how it goes. Again, I hope to see you soon. I hope everyone is well. Um, I'm not going to lie, COVID has hit our family like many other families. And so it has been a little rough. But I'm hoping everyone right now is doing well. And I hope to see you soon. Stay inspired. Even if it's just crazy boxes like this that can inspire you and get you just going. Do it. Do what's going to make you feel good. Do what's going to get those explosive creativity going. And let me tell you, some of my crazy you're going to see soon. All right? Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.